Alright, what is going on people of the internet, and welcome back to the episode of Arc Survival Evolved, Max Damage. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the beaver, the Castoroidus, which actually sounds more like a disease that you can catch, rather than the name for a scientific creature. So, the beaver, it was added to the game not terribly long ago. Uh, I believe it's still the most recent creature added to the game, but I'm not super familiar with my arc right now. But, uh, yeah, it is an absolutely phenomenal creature. It has a higher damage output than the Carno, and I believe it's on point with the Megalodon. And if you get it at a max level and put max melee damage into it, boy, it can chew through the landscape pretty damn quick. Now, it's not particularly fast, but that's not really too much of an issue. It's definitely work around. It, you can definitely work around it, no problem. So, there haven't been videos in a little while, and you can probably hear it in my voice that there's still a little bit of death in it. I mean, I was pretty sick for like a week, and it was probably the worst sickness I've had in years, so... Yeah, that, uh, another thing is that uh, the last video that I put out was the pitch to the pooping of all of people. Now, I haven't actually heard anything back other than the comments that you can see there. Uh, XB left a comment. That was really cool. Uh, Whippet. Whippet left a comment. That was really awesome, too. And so did Drax, but it was... He deleted it, so... And Mazion liked a tweet of somebody who said that I should join the server, so yeah. Oh, yeah, I have a Twitter now. XB told me to get one, so I don't know. Follow me there or, or don't. I'm going to put a link to it. But uh, yeah, apparently that's a good way to boost communications. I don't know. I felt like comments were really good, but we'll see if this helps too. So the Castoroidus, as you can see here, we're doing the 5x5 trial. This one actually has the highest stock melee at 314, which is an absolutely unbelievably high percentage post nerf. So that is very, very good. So we're going to be adding the experience to this one and maxing this one out. So 314 translates to pretty high number. I forget what exactly it was because I did record this a little while ago, but now that I finally got my voice back to some extent, I can do post commentary on it. So, 628 I believe is what the melee damage was saying right there, so I'm going to re or return off players only so we can go attend and attack this turtle. Now, I'm sure you're already familiar. Carvanemus very bulky, but if you whistle for five beavers to attack them, they don't survive particularly particularly long so yeah about the pooping evolve server as of right now it doesn't really look like I'm gonna be going out of that server which is a bit unfortunate I mean I gotta cry over or anything but uh, it is a bit sad because I really wanted to do that but uh, yeah I, I might send one more message to the people and I might do something on Twitter for it but after that that's probably gonna be my last stand so I turn on the fly command for the beaver and it, it, it just really is more of a convenience thing for me. I mean, I just wanted this to go faster because running to this Bronto would have taken a fair amount of time and I didn't really feel like waiting, so. 16, level 16 Bronto gets taken down really quickly by this beaver, so. It's got a spectacular damage output. Now, it's obviously not anything comparable to the Giganotosaurus, but could you really expect it to be? So, as you can see, we take it into the water here to test out its damage against other things. Now this Megalodon's received two hits and is already looking pretty bad and four is good enough to kill it and that's a pretty high level Megalodon. Something that is rather bulky in nature to begin with. So Coals, Coels, Colacanths, absolutely no problem either. This Ichthy, I think I don't want to bother attacking it mainly because they are they are still faster than me which is going to be a bit of a hindrance. So. Uh, of course we're going to be summoning in a 120 Rex just for lols to see how much damage this beaver can do to it and you'd really expect a 120 Rex out in the wild to put up a fight against probably anything really I mean a 120 Rex should be able to put up a good fight against even some of the toughest gigas that people have on their own time but as you can see here I'm sure that the output it's giving to me is quite significant but having even his stats turned on and the fact that I can't take damage I can just shove this Rex back into the water and the beaver just tosses it and drops it like it's absolutely nothing, which it pretty much isn't. So, it takes a little while, but the T-Rex goes down and gets dropped into the ocean by this beaver now. Pretty unheard of for a mammal to do that. So, we're going to be taking out against the Broodmother now. And I'm going to be completely honest, I don't know if I can maintain this kind of final boss fight summoning the level 1 Broodmother. Namely because of how damn long it took to kill this Broodmother, I mean... It took forever, I'll put up a final counter of the time, but I had to speed this fight up just because it was so long and so boring and I was tearing my hair out the whole time that this was happening just because it was such a boring fight to do and I, I had to speed it up for that very reason. So you can see here, 
The beaver goes in against the broodmother, and the fight starts. Now, the broodmother, of course, summoning in a bunch of Uranios around it, and there are some high-level ones that do get summoned in, but I think they all get one or two shot by the beaver, which speaks great numbers about how strong this thing is. I mean, there are 104s, 98s, they all get summoned in to try and fight the Castoroidus, but they get completely tossed to the side and just completely forgotten about. So as you can see here, the fight has been sped up to a rate where you can kind of still get a sense of how many times I have to attack the Broodmother for it having anything to have happened, but uh, not to the point where it's too, too boring. So as you can see, there was a Raptor and an Argentivus that tried to attack, and I actually was the one to get the hits on it. There's another Raptor there that you can see, and they are just absolutely destroyed by the Beaver. So the Beaver has incredible attack for pretty much anything you're going to run into on the Ark. But don't expect to go alpha hunting with it because you're going to need that health for it. I mean, the Rex, you could probably take on 1v1 without infinite stats. But as soon as you run into something like an alpha raptor, you're probably going to get into some issues. So we're coming up to the point where the fight is going to be over here. The final time for this fight was 4 minutes, 48 seconds, 0.45 nanoseconds. So it did take a little while. But the Broodmother does eventually go down. It is, of course, a level 1. Not sure if I'm going to be able to keep the speed board up here like Top Gear, but uh, the gig had clocked in at under 20 seconds, and this one was nearly 5 minutes now. When we get to something like the Gallimimus or the Parasaur, it's going to take a lot longer, probably at least 20 to 30 minutes. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain this format, but uh, I'll see what I can do. So if you got suggestions for future episodes, you can leave them in the comments. I'll always be reading them. I'll leave the normal distribution graph on screen now of how we get the highest number. It's not max melee damage, but it's very close. So as you can see here on this graph, basically what happens is when something gets spawned in, it gets put into something which is a normal distribution. Now, we're trying to get into the highest quantity of this normal distribution. Now, there's percentiles, and each standard deviation has their own certain amount of percentiles, and the standard deviation is essentially how close it is to the mean, which is the average. And the further you get from that, the lower chance you have to get that. So hypothetically in art, because there's no limiter, you can have something with a million percent melee damage, or you can have something with zero percent melee damage, and the odds of that happening is very, very small. So that's basically how we're trying to get the maxed out melee damage here, and we're doing a 5x5 five five trial to find realistically what is the highest damage. So anyway, that's going to do it from us. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for future episodes, you can leave them in the comments, and we'll see you in the next episode of what we make. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you're you're talking about a max melee damage series. Yeah, I've had that question a couple times before. I'm actually planning to do one, but uh, the arc damage has nerfed everything kind of recently, and that's a bit of a disappointment because I don't know. It just I'm looking for some stability before I actually do a max damage series. Like I plan to do one, but I want to make sure the arc devs will give us some stability before before we. Hey, what are, what are you doing down there? Hey, don't don't bite that! Ow! 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 ow. No! Hey, stop! Ow! Fast forward six months. Winter had come and passed, and with it, took bananas, as well as Beagle's sanity. Until finally... Excuse me, sir. Have you seen my wife? What is that, dude?